Okay, <laughs> it's the Monday after the rumble. Which can mean only one thing. We're going to start with the rumble winner. Yes. Well, <laughs> the, no. <laughs> the, the women's rumble. No. Because we started with Stephanie McMahon. Please tell me she wasn't glowing about how she started the women's revolution. Uh, well, it wasn't far off. No, it was basically, yeah, last night was epic, and yeah, we all did a great job. <laughs> it was like, mm, it was okay. Yeah. yeah, so then, this then brought out the women's Rumble winner, Asuka. She was like trying to get an answer out of her, going, which title will you go for at WrestleMania? And she just kept on giving her answers in Japanese. Yeah, she said a few things in Japanese, and the crowd was like, yeah, what? <laughs> and I think the one line she said was, I'm going to be champion at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah, but, but which champion? You <laughs> didn't answer the question at all. Yeah. And then for no reason whatsoever, this then brought out Sasha Banks. Yeah. And apparently she's had enough of Oscar, and she's ready for Oscar. Apparently so. So Stephanie was like, right, let's make it happen then, tonight. Let's find out. Yeah. So, now we move on to the first match of the evening. God. Yeah, uh, this has been announced by Kurt, I believe. We were going to have matches to determine who would be in the Elimination Chamber hmm. match for the men's. Oh, let me very quickly add as well. Stephanie also announced there's going to be a women's elimination chamber match as well. Yeah, so, that'll put butts on the seat. Uh, where do we start with this one? <laughs> well, Kane took an ass kicking. The first qualifying match for the elimination chamber match Braun versus Kane. And uh, this was a last man standing match. Didn't go well for Kane at all. No, but I was shocked at how they finished it. <laughs> yeah, this was pretty funny. Braun basically flipped over part of the platform <laughs> yeah. of the entrance where the announcer's table is. Yeah, I mean, when he went up there, I was like, okay, he's going to flip the table off the stage onto Kane. Yeah. And then he ended up picking up the whole stage. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> Yep, and pretty much crushing Kane. And then he walked off, and then he'd come back again, and Corey was just like, Braun, what, <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Kurt wanted me to be the last man standing. I'm the last man standing. <laughs> so, Braun wins, yeah, apparently. Because <laughs> the ref just stopped the match. <laughs> well, I think he kept counting. <laughs> he didn't have a choice. <laughs> So, Braun's in the chamber match. And, and we should point out that we unfortunately had a loss this week. <laughs> Booker T is no longer on commentary. But it's alright, because we've got the return of the coach. Yeah, I like Booker. Only because Corey kept on <laughs> teasing him every week about Titus Worldwide. He even mentioned that this week, but we'll get on to that later. Yeah. Oh, Christ. So we then move on to our next Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Elias versus Woken Matt Hardy. Yes. So, I just want to quickly note here as well, they are ballsing up the Woken Matt character already. Yeah. But we got some encouraging news on Monday. The man who helped discover the great, broken brilliance of Matt Hardy, Jeremy Borash, oh, has God. signed with WWE. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't think they'd ever bring him in. Yeah, so hopefully we can now get proper, broken Matt Hardy, because there is no court case now. No. TNA no. just gave up. They just like, you know, script. Bloody habit. It was too much bad publicity for him. Yeah. So, you know, we can drop all this woken rubbish and we can have a broken 
that hard. Vince won't do it because no. he, cause he doesn't own it. No. He's done it. If Vince doesn't own it, he won't do it. It's all right. About a year and a half time, he's going to be buggering off because he'll be too busy concentrating on the XFL. Good. Yeah, he can go and balls that up. Leave the wrestling company to Triple H. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. So. This was weird. Yeah, I didn't really like this one. So I'm not sure what it was. Maybe their styles just didn't mesh properly. But there wasn't a lot in this match, so I was like, yeah, okay. I was waiting for the inevitable Bray Wyatt interruption. But it didn't come. It did come. Until after the match. Oh. Ah. Uh, Elias. Hit the drift away on that. He picked up the victory. Yeah. It wasn't a long match at all. Mm. No. And then uh, after the match finished and Elias went off to celebrate, we then did get Bray White interrupt. He just stood there on the Titan Tron and just laughed. Yeah. And it just ended. Oh, how have you ballsed up Bray White? Yeah. You know, a year ago, he would have been just about to win his first WWE title. Uh. And then they moved him to Raw. And look what's happened since. So. We've got a rematch next. The Intercontinental title on the line. With the Wiz Ugh. defending against Roman Reigns. Right, not to put it down on anything, but I didn't like this one either. <laughs> no. It was way too predictable, and you just thought, well, obviously Roman's lost it for a reason, so they're moving on from this. So, yeah, yeah. inevitably, after heavy, heavy interference, the Miz picked up the victory in this one. Yes, with the same old boring, skull-crushing finale he's been doing for the last eight years or so. After a distraction, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, because the Miz to Arge, even though they got ejected... They still managed to get involved. Yeah. I was like, why don't they just ban them before the match starts? I mean, you know they're going to get involved. Yeah. Stupid referees. <sighs> so, we've got tag team action for you next. Got the Revival versus Heath Slater and Rhino. Well, this is Pointless match number one. Long story short, Rhino and Heath had a tiny bit of offense, but then Rhino injured his knee, and the revival took advantage of it and hit the shadow machine oh, on Rhino. The damn shadow machine! And picked up the victory. Yes, and then and then after the match, they demanded <laughs> they deserve more respect. Yes, they cut some horrible promo about how, like, oh, what's that? I can't remember who was interviewing them, but she didn't know any of the tag teams that they mentioned. Yeah. And they're like, oh, of course you don't. No one appreciates tag team wrestling anymore. Mm. We're bringing it back. <laughs> like, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. So, yeah, and the crowd weren't interested in that promo whatsoever. No. <clears throat> So, oh, moving on. It was time for that grudge match that was made at the start of the night. Oscar versus Sasha Banks. Mm. Is it me? Or are they trying their hardest to make Sasha Banks a heel without actually doing it? Yeah, sort of. Well, they've got to notice she's lost her edge massively over the last few months. Mm. Maybe they're trying to make her a bit more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, her mimicking Oscar's actions and that. And, uh, yeah. The only problem is, it's just like every other Oscar match you've watched ever since she's been called up for NXT, you're just waiting for her to win the match. Mm. 
that again, there was no point did I ever think that she was going to lose. I mean, I got to admit, when she was in the bank statement, I thought, okay, she might tap. Might. <laughs> but as soon as she started wriggling, I was like, yeah, okay. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> no. Then it didn't. And in the end, Oscar put in the Oscar lock. Yep. And Sasha tapped. So, they, in fact, she probably won't lose a match now until WrestleMania. Yeah, no yeah, problem. And that's even if she doesn't win then. <laughs> yeah. I'm calling it right now. She's not losing until at least after <laughs> WrestleMania. It might be SummerSlam. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, here you go again. Tag team action. Your Raw Tag Team Champions against Titus Worldwide. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. And let's not forget they got their statistician, Dana Brooke. Oh, it? yeah. Taking notes. The, the point was made up. Why is she using a pen and paper and not an iPad? Valid question. I've mean, got to admit, although this match was going on, I thought the commentary was a lot better than the actual match. <laughs> Because Coach was saying, oh, he wanted to join Titus Worldwide. <laughs> and Corey was like, we spent ages trying to get Booker to admit he was part of Titus Worldwide, and he never did. <laughs> yeah. So but, no, with the titles on the line, again, knew where it was going. Yeah, although Titus Worldwide have got the victory on him the last two times. You knew it wasn't going to be third time luck. No, couldn't see him putting the titles on him. No. So, in the end, uh, they hit their white noise middle top rope DDT combo on Titus. Oh, on Titus. And they picked up the victory and retained in the titles. Proving that they don't just set the bar. <laughs> They are the boss. Brilliant. Yeah. So we now move on to our main event of the evening. Oh, yeah. And it was the third qualifying match for Elimination Chamber. It was John Cena versus Finn Balor. Yeah. Basically, Cena, for some reason, says that he needs to find a reason to go to WrestleMania. Okay. And if he wins the Elimination Chamber, he's got a reason. Because he'll be fighting Brock Lesnar for a title he's never won. Okay. All right. So you want to face Brock Lesnar again. How'd that work out for you last time? You got suplexed 13 times and F5 twice. <laughs> I'm sure Brock's Good. really scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I thought, you know, perfect opportunity. Finn could get the win. And Cena could go bugger off and do something else. Yeah. Well, that wasn't to be. No, it didn't quite work out like that. Although, as we noted in this match, the crowd were a little bit more on Cena's back than they normally are. And oh. It actually seemed to affect him yeah. this time around. And in fact, apparently, when it went backstage, and apparently he even turned around and saw they said, you know, I'm really pissed off with that crowd tonight. This was weird, because in every scene of Manchester, you know, he gets booed a lot, and it never bothers him. Yeah. But this one, he, he probably reacted to the crowd. Yeah. It was like they were chanting a few things at him, and like, he'd go to the crowd and go, hey, I'm only trying to get to WrestleMania. They'd boo him some more. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. So and when the inevitable AA happened, he done the too sweet <sighs> symbol as he hit it on Finn. And they booed him some more. Yeah. But that wasn't enough. You know, he kicked out of the first AA. It took the super AA mm, from the middle rope to get the job done. Yes, so unfortunately the man who doesn't need to be in the chamber is. Yeah. And the man who should be in it isn't. No. And that's how we ended Monday Night Raw. 
So yeah, essentially with all of that, it really nothing really happened. <laughs> so that's gonna wrap it up then. <laughs> From your hosts, the master of the brain damage. Martin. And the one and only Sam Age. We'll see you again for the next one. And just remember, folks, we don't just set the bar. We, we are, are the bar. bar. <laughs>